teams of scientists from academia, state, and federal governments are working together to map and understand how the diversity of life is distributed in Long Island Sound. Such maps will help environmental managers make better decisions, such as where, and perhaps more importantly, where not, to place subsea cables, pipelines, and other offshore infrastructure, and which habitats are essential to conserve biodiversity while allowing sustainable use by humans. Funded by the Cross Sound Cable Settlement Fund and administered by the Long Island Sound Study, scientists are bringing years of experience and state-of-the-art technologies to understand one of the most important challenges facing society, that is, understanding the linkages between the diversity of life in the ocean, how this is changing over time, and how we can continue to benefit from the ecological goods and services the ocean provides. A pilot study was identified in the Central Sound with diverse topography, habitats, and species. In this area, they are using sophisticated sonars to develop large-scale maps of the seafloor, grabs and cores to sample the sediments and the animals that live within, and optical technologies to provide images and video of the distribution and abundance of organisms. These images, produced by multi-beam sonar technologies, show the water depth with orange being the shallowest and blue being the deepest. The following are snapshots of some of the underwater habitats of Long Island Sound from a recent remotely operated vehicle survey of the pilot area. Dive 1 was conducted in the northwest corner of the pilot area, dominated by large sand waves that support dense blue mussel communities. These communities are extensive enough to be imaged using the sonar mapping technologies, but their patchy nature, density, composition, and associated species can be quantified from the ROV video. Dive 2 investigated an area of northern Stratford Shoal that exhibited an interesting roughness on the sonar maps, which featured small cobbles with a long-lived northern star coral growing on them. This species is not reef building, but makes a calcium carbonate skeleton like those species that form coral reefs in tropical seas. Here, a small cunner, related to the popular tatog, a sport fish, can be seen foraging amongst the corals. The site also supports both the spider crab, Libinia, and rock crab, Cancer irroratus. A mussel appears to be hitching a ride on the shell of this crab. What do you suppose the mussel gains from this relationship? How about the crab? Dive 4 focuses on an area just to the north of a deep channel cut through the shoal by the strength of the incessant tidal currents that dominate the physical environment of the seafloor. These currents are able to move the loose sand about on each cycle, creating a very dynamic habitat. Dive 5 was conducted to the south of the deep east-west running channel on a mud sand bottom.
The video from this dive captured an interesting behavior exhibited by the Carolina hake. Several spider crabs were observed aggregating on the sea floor, which could indicate this is an area where molting and mating occur. Pairing of males with females, like the pair seen here, precedes mating. Dive 6 traversed an area on the southern end of Stratford Shoal in a sandy area interspersed with boulders. A cunner is not only imaged but also measured by parallel red laser beams mounted on the ROV that are 10 centimeters, about 4 inches apart. A lost or ghost lobster trap provides a hard substrate similar to a boulder to which various invertebrates have attached over time. All traps have vents that allow undersized lobsters to escape, but the vent itself is attached by links that corrode after extended submersion, allowing all lobsters to enter and exit the trap and avoid unintended mortality. This large boulder is covered by the white star coral and also supports large colonies of two species of suspension-feeding hydrozoans. They feed by capturing drifting plankton and particles with stinging sails on a whirl of tentacles. This close-up of the star coral shows how it feeds by extending its pulps into the water to capture food drifting by with the current. A juvenile fish fights the tidal current perhaps seeking shelter from the current in the lee of the large boulder. Such physical habitats provide shelter for both juvenile and adult fishes, not only from the energy sapping currents, but also larger predators. This boulder supports dense colonies of the light purple hydrozoan tubularia that extend up into the water column. The boulder also provides habitat for two cunner. In addition, there are a wide variety of small crustaceans that inhabit these tentacles upon which fish can forage. Nearby, a winter flounder lies well camouflaged on the seafloor, its flattened body providing its own relief from the current. Dive 7 explored the eastern section of Stratford Shoal, another area dominated by large boulders. 
These boulders supported dense numbers of the small anemone diademini, which can be seen with its light orange tentacles extended into the water column, again to capture the food suspended in the strong bottom currents of the sound. Closer inspection reveals a slow-moving nudibranch. The boulder habitat is also home to the dwindling Long Island Sound population of the American lobster, Homerus americanus. The Long Island Sound Mapping and Research Collaborative, or LISMARC, is comprised of scientists from the universities of Connecticut, New Haven, Rhode Island, and the U.S. Geological Survey. The results of the pilot study will be evaluated to ensure that the data products provide resource managers with state-of-the-art tools to wisely manage Long Island Sound.